What's up guys, this is Fedor Holtz and today I want to talk about a pretty special topic, a private topic and I have done this type of yearly review I think for 2020 which was one of my most, kind of my comeback year, one of my most successful years actually in poker. And I think it is very important to also do these type of reviews about things that don't go so well. And I want to share about my worst year in poker so far, which was 2021. And it's been a pretty great year in my life, but a pretty terrible year in terms of poker. I think it's important to talk about these topics as well. There's a lot of things different and I want to dive into a, a bit more details around it. So in a nutshell, I think I'm down about 1.5 million in poker. I've sold some action, so personally that's maybe half of that. So I'm personally maybe down 700k in 2021 but i think it's very important to put these things into perspective and i want to draw some conclusions also to the years before so 2020 and also 2016 15 14 and what things are different and how important it is to put these things into perspective let me give some background on this number one that is really important is volume a lot of people talk about downswings a lot of people talk about bad beat stories and how things aren't going well and ah, they're down x or you know things aren't going well and one of the big things that plays a role is volume a lot of people just complain about downswings that are over brief periods of time. Could be live tournaments, could be short online stretches. So volume plays a major role. And there is one of the first things now, time and volume are two very, very different things. In 2015 or 16, I would say I maybe played four or 5,000 online tournaments, pretty good sample size. So over this amount of tournaments, it's unlike, much unlikelier to, to have a bad downswing. Over the last year, 2021, I maybe played 500 online tournaments. So as you can see already, I played maybe only, you know, 10, 15% of the volume that I've played in one of my main playing years where I was playing every Sunday, almost every Tuesday, lots of Thursdays. So lots of online grinding days. This is the first thing already. Now, volume plays a huge role. So always try to put things into perspective of how many tournaments have you played or how many hands have you played. This is major because right now I could say, oh, I had a really bad 2021. I lost a million dollars, but I could also say over 500 games, I lost 300 binds or 100 binds or something like that. So then again, it sounds less crazy. And that kind of leads to the second point, which is buy-ins. So yes, this number now sounds crazy. It's like, wow, okay, so much money, but you also have to see like what the buy-in is. And if I'm playing a $25,000 tournament, it's much, much different than if I play a $500 tournament. If I would have lost a million dollars playing $500 tournaments, it's a very, very different story than if I lose it playing $25,000 tournaments. So for $25,000, yes, it is still a lot of money, but it's only 40 binds. Whereas it would be much different if I'd be playing mid or low stakes. So putting the number into perspective of the buy-ins, the loss is high, but the potential upside would have been high as well. In 2020, I think I made 2 million. I think my average buy-in was about $3,500. So there you can see I played a lot of 5Ks, 10Ks, 25Ks, and that puts that number into perspective in some degree as well. Now it comes to the third and most important part, which is win rate. And this is the aspect where I would say most of the people have wrong conceptions, go off the rails, don't understand what they're talking about and misjudge a lot of what is going on because the variance is incomprehensible for our brains. If I would ask you right now, you know, what is the possible variance between someone who plays a thousand games and has a 10% win rate and someone who plays a thousand games and has a 30% win rate, it's so hard to just have a good natural feeling for that. But one thing I can assure you, the win rate, if it's higher, it will make the way you experience it significantly different. That's why, for example, playing live poker tournaments, even though the volume is low, like I maybe have played 50, uh, 500 live poker tournaments in my life, something like that. Nevertheless, it feels like um, constant winning because the win rates were crazy. Like my win rates in live poker tournaments, maybe my average ROI was 100% or something, depending on which tournaments I played. If I played more super hard it's less, but in these 1Ks, 2Ks, 5K main events, like 500 
like Eureka main, big 1Ks, like 10K Aussie millions, like 10K WSOP, big WSOP events, like there the win rates are absolutely incredible. Even yes, you play small samples, but if the win rates are crazy, crazy high, your variance will be much lower. So your percentage of loss will be much lower on a small sample size. If I play 500 live tournaments, where I have 150% ROI, the variance will be significantly, significantly lower. And the games I played are tough online games against some of the best in the world where my win rate is maybe 5%. So now looking at that where, you know, it might be between zero and, and 12% ROI, obviously I play some softer games as well, but then it's not only that I play against really strong competition, but it's also that the higher the buy-in, normally the stronger the competition. So it's basically also that the majority of the buy-ins I played are against the tougher opponents and the smaller buy-ins are against the weaker opponents. So that also plays a huge role where the swings now get kind of multiplied where let's say I have a 5% win rate in 70% of the money I invest in, in tournaments and that has a crazy impact on variance. And the last point I wanna mention because it also plays a big role is average field size or field size in general. The field size and payout structure as well also has a pretty big impact on variance. So if you play smaller fields or really large fields, that will also shift a lot in the variance and your outcomes. So the point I wanna to get to is, I think for a lot of players who maybe aren't so familiar with volume, with playing like for like full-time poker for lots and lots of years, if you look, and I can highly recommend, take a look at Poker Dope Tournament Variance Calculator. It's absolutely one of my favorite tools. Just type in some different types of calculations that you can go through. If I assume my win rate to be 40%, which I think I had in 2015, and I play 4,000 tournaments with not so crazy swings and binds. I think the highest bind I could play back then was a random 5K sometimes, but mostly it was 1Ks, 500s, 100s, $200 tournaments. So it was all kind of close together. Now the spread is much bigger. So the, the change is, is massive. A, I was playing way more tournaments with a way higher win rate, but a much lower average buy-in. I think my average buy-in back then was maybe $400. And now it's much tougher competition with much lower win rate, but much bigger buy-ins. Uh, mentally also was a big shift for me that I had to that I had to deal with and I had to understand like, oh, how how is this environment different? That kind of leads all into how I'm dealing with this. And and it's a it's a personal challenge for me as well to adapt my mindset from kind of knowing back then where if I play a year of poker, I'm kind of always winning because I had such high win rates and played a lot of volume. And now I'm in a different space. Like now it's more 2020 and 2021, I think are very comparable years where I play somewhere between, I mostly play Sundays, I play big tournaments, I play very high buy-ins. I try to game select, so I'm, I'm skipping some of the really tough ones, but like I'm still playing against some of the best in the game and I'm playing uh, a three to four K average buy-in. So there's a lot of these 25 Ks and, and, and 10 Ks in the mix. And that will mean that the financial swings, if I multiply my win rate with the bind will be significantly higher. And that's just a new paradigm, a new environment for me. So if I look at, 2020 where I think, yeah, I'm up maybe two, 2.5 million. And then now 2021, my worst poker year so far, where I think I'm down 1.4, 1.5 million. It's like, that's the new environment that I have to get used to and I have to mentally adapt to. Yeah, this is uh, my worst poker year ever. And I think uh, it's important to keep a smile with that because it's important to, to focus on these facts. It's important to focus on the only thing that happened is I played tournaments that I think I'm beating, that I enjoy playing. Yes, with a lower win rate, but I kind of knew what I was getting into. I didn't go in there thinking I had a 40% ROI. I, I did go in there thinking I have maybe between four and 10%. Like I think I'm beating the field, but I also know there's a lot of variance involved and I'm ready to battle. I'm ready to get into these stakes and I know that I can run bad over a couple hundred, a couple thousand games maybe even. And that's what I signed up for. And if I now get the outcome of, you know, the lower end where things went really bad and lost lots of relevant all ends and it's just a very, very normal part of the game, it could have been the opposite as well. It could have like 2020 where things were going much better and I was more on the positive side of things, now I'm more on the negative side of things. I think that is a crucial lesson 
for poker players to understand what you're getting into. That was a very important lesson for me to adapt to and I think also for maybe when you're a hobby player or also when you battle in high stakes or when you don't play that much volume or when you play games where there's crazy variants. Like I know some people who um, you maybe have that experience in, in private games where sometimes you get into this crazy private game and it's like, you know, it's you only play 200 hands like a couple nights maybe, and it's like 20 times bigger than what you normally play. If it goes well, yes, hooray, great. But if it goes poorly, then you need to grind back in your lower stakes for like the next year. So um, that's kind of how it feels right now. Yeah, I wanted to share my experience uh, around this because there is definitely a frustrating element that I can also feel around this confirming bias around, ah, oh, again, kind of working my way through this. And whenever it happens, when I'm playing online, also when I'm streaming, there's definitely some negative emotions in there. And I think it is a great personal challenge to work through that and 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 get stronger out of it and i think that is something that every poker player has to deal with in some capacity at some point so that's why i think this topic is so important understand what environment you get yourself into use the variance calculator i highly highly recommend this it helped me so much to put things into perspective and then also design the environment in a way that is great for you that you feel good about I personally would highly recommend to play these games where you have a high win rate because it's just much more fun to play games where you are a big winner and have less swings and just have less things to think about. I personally really enjoy being in the battle. I love playing against the best and that's part of the environment there is like I it's impossible for me to have 40% win rate there. I'm looking for small edges to find against some of the best players in the world and uh, some of the more recreational players who play these games. And so that's the game I sign up for. And I think that is my fundamental takeaway from last year where I had financially a bad year. I, I grew incredibly as a player. I studied more than I played. I really felt like it helped me mentally to, to grow. I had a lot of fun playing actually. I'm pretty confident that if I continue to stay on a high level, to work on my game, to stay on top of it, that I can uh, achieve some better results in the future if I focus on a process and focus on playing well. I hope you guys enjoyed my yearly review of 2021. If you guys like content like this, it highly, highly motivates me. If you would leave a subscribe, um, that would be really awesome. And I wanna hear how your 2021 was in the comments. Guys, stay safe. Really nice to see you again and uh, we'll see you at the next video. Cheers, bye.